you know, whenever we're writing a story, you can come up with some scenes that are so fabulous. You think it's gonna be the best scene you ever saw in a whole movie, ever, right? It's fabulous. But then you know how you come with your log line and the purpose of the story? It just doesn't fit. And you can't have any scene in a movie that's not pushing the story forward. If it's not pushing it forward, it doesn't matter how good it is, how fabulous, how special. Even if your mama is in that scene, she has to get cut. <laughs> I, was, I heard Ron Howard one time. You know Ron Howard, Opie, right? right? Well, his dad was in a scene, and he had to call his dad. And so apologetic, but daddy got cut. Scene wasn't moving it forward. Okay? Now, this is why I, I was joking. I told Lance, I said, this is going to save mankind, what I'm about to tell you. When you're old on your deathbed, people will thank me that I gave you this information. <laughs> Here it is. Now, have you ever like been at a party or whatever, and this is especially good for what you're about to do. Have you ever like been sitting around listening to people at a party and they start telling a story, yeah. and you think if I just had a rope, it'd be around my neck because I can't take this anymore? <laughs> uh, they're getting all these details. Okay, you know that story that I told you about the emergency room? Let me give it to you in classic bad storytelling. <laughs> oh yeah, was, we, we went to the emergency room Friday night at like seven, se was it eight? No. Jenny, was it seven, 6.30, 6.37, was it, you know, maybe it was Saturday. Well, anyway, you've all, yes. but anyway. you're flashing back, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. And so we went in there, we're sitting in this room and oh my gosh, it was so cold. And I had to go out to the car and get a blanket. I was so cold. So anyway, I'm sitting there with my friends with uh, Sarah and Bob and Jane, because we had just been to Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh my God, right? Ah! By this time, your cell phone's ringing or something. And so, right, so they're in there. And then there was this girl across the way, and she had on, oh my gosh, you should have seen what she had on. <laughs> right? You know, when we go through the whole thing, and there was people in there, they were bleeding, there was some vomiting, and these babies were crying. And, and um, I sent Bob for Starbucks, because you know, the, <laughs> the baby, the baby's crying. I just, I mean, I had to have Starbucks. <laughs> I couldn't, my God, I couldn't tell a story like this if I had to. So, <laughs> I did. <laughs> so anyway. So anyway, this one girl, she comes back in and she has this band-aid around her finger and she goes up to the front and she starts complaining and she tells everybody, you know, there was those people over there, they got here after me and you saw them and then there was those people with that baby and you saw them and she goes to this long list and then, you know, she shows them this band-aid and she has this little Flintstone band-aid on, you know, on her finger and she held it up and she said, everybody else gone before me and I really think that you need to see me next. And the guy says, I'm sorry, but you see all these people out here. We have to take everybody in order of illnesses. Like we have somebody over here with a shotgun wound. And <laughs> somebody over here has had their left arm almost cut off. <laughs> and so we'll get to it. She goes, well, I just care about me, myself, and I. And I just couldn't believe it. Everybody in the emergency room, we all turned around and we were all looking at each other. And by this time, I need another Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> right, and by this time, oh my, are, are you, you're gone, are you gone, yeah. right, no, no, I, all right, yeah, now, just like in your movie, if it does not move the story forward, we don't need it, now out of that three minute story or whatever it was, here's the deal, here's the story, no, here's the story, in the emergency room that other night, you can't believe it. All these people in the emergency room, this girl walks up with a band-aid on her finger. She goes, I need to have my hand looked at because other people have come in after me and you've seen them first. And he goes, lady, are you kidding me? We gotta take care of the gunshot wounds and the arms cut off before we get to your finger. And she goes, I don't care. All I care about is me, myself, and I. Did you get the story? Yes. What'd you miss? Everything. Nothing. <laughs> you didn't miss nothing, right? I just gave you a 20 second story that had some meat. I, I like, I like the <laughs> but here's, here's the point of what I want you to, the whole point is, is, is like he just told you, you have a voice and you want to be heard. 
first person's, you're not listening to that person. And whenever they start to tell you a story again, you're like, oh, God, oh, God. You've already shut them down before they even get started. And they might be about to tell you the most incredible story ever, but you're not going to hear it. That's it. When you tell stories, you have, you have punch. You get rid of all the details that don't mean anything. You just tell the story and you give it punch and you keep it short. And I'm not saying you should not exaggerate. However, however, you all want to be actors and actresses somewhere in there. <laughs> I'm just saying, make it a little more entertaining for the folks. Right? Right? Like, okay, I need my finger seen because other people came in here before me. Did you enjoy that? No. I, I got here first and my finger has a cut. But, but wasn't it fun? Yeah. yeah, you already saw the ridiculousness of that girl, right? Yeah. A lot more. There's nothing wrong with that. And people go, Sandra, and, and I'll be replaying a story about when I was really hot. And everybody, don't be mad. And I go, oh, I'm not mad. I'm just letting you experience it like I did. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to charge me how much? I don't think so. <laughs> now, don't be mad. I go, no, I was just explaining to you how I was able to gently persuade them that they weren't going to charge me that price. <laughs> how they were able to come see it in my way. That's it. Now, is that not advice that is going to change the world? The wor Do you know how many people in your life are going to thank you and be so grateful that you know how to tell a story with punch? Yeah. Story with meaning. Like stories change everything. Jesus taught with stories. I like stories. Everybody loves stories. Exactly. You know, I remember one time in school they said, well, if you were going to have this disaster, you know, what kind of people should we save? You know, people say, oh, yeah, the doctor, the lawyer. You know, everybody, everybody always wants to cut the storyteller. I want to know the redness. You're not going to have TV. You're not going to have cable. You're going to need a storyteller. Storytellers are great. I'm a storyteller. I love storytellers. That's it. It was a little more than three minutes. I got a little carried away with my storytelling. <laughs> I mean, you know. why we were intrigued with the bad illustration is because it was so funny, okay. which actually had the opposite effect. It became an entertaining, tormenting story. <laughs> well, but now that just goes to the art of being a storyteller. Uh, I would challenge all of you to learn to be a great storyteller. Because I have to tell you, if, if you ask people what they enjoy most about me, they always say storyteller. I mean, not that I go around having a lot of conversations about, hey, what do you enjoy about me? 